Hello, my name is Cameron Allardin, and I am a math major at TMUT. Hello, my name is Delfina Mishuna, and I'm also a math major at TMUT. So um, the name of our presentation is motion of a bird on a wheel. And our problem is to replicate the motion of a bird using self-generated momentum to rotate along the vertical wheel. And right now we'll show you a quick video um, what we basically meant by it. Okay, so that's where we got the idea from. So the goal of our project is to create a model that generates the same angular acceleration of the bird and describe it using mathematical expressions. And the variables we have today are f of b, which is force of the bird, m of b, which illustrates mass of the bird, r, which represents radius of the wheel, and t of n, which is time at position n. And the assumptions that we have to make our model work are the air resistance must be negligible, the mass of the bird is constant, the radius of the wheel does not change, and the top of the bird is the bird's initial position, or zero, and the bird applies the same amount of force on each rotation. So now we are going to present the model we have. And the model we have designed is a square device fixed to the edge of the wheel. It has the same mass as the bird and exerts the same force as the bird in a video. The device motion is only tangential and only applies the force at the initial position or top of the wheel. It applies the force every time it reaches the initial position, which we'll show in a graph later. To find the motion of the device, we first identify where the acceleration of the bird increases and decreases using the equation theta is equal to one half alpha t squared. So uh, by identifying five key points of motion on, of the bird along the wheel, we calculated the angular acceleration or alpha at each point. Using each angle and radiance, we can see that the angular acceleration is the greatest at position one and the least at position four. Okay, and we have the four positions here, which the alpha of zero is zero, alpha of one is pi over three t one square, alpha two is pi over t two square, alpha three is two pi over t3 squared, and then alpha 4 is 3 pi over t4 squared. So our model must exhibit the same force as the bird to achieve the same pattern in its angular acceleration. So to uh, calculate this, we started by using the equation alpha equals torque over inertia. And um, the equation for torque is force times uh, r and the, or radi the radius, and then under that is one half m radius squared. And then by replacing these with our specific variables that we established in the beginning, we were able to get alpha equals two fb over mvr. And because the position one of the bird is directly after it applies its force, we can substitute the angular acceleration for pi over three t one squared. Okay, so to calculate the force of the bird, we start with pi over 3 t1 squared equals 2 fb over mbr. With cross multiplication, we see that uh, pi times mbr equals 3 t1 squared times 2 fb. Now, dividing both sides by 3t1 squared eliminates this factor on this side, and we're able to get 2fb by itself. OK, 
Okay, so now we have pi mv r over 3t1 squared equals 2fb. Finally, we can multiply both sides by 1 over 2 to eliminate the 2 on this left-hand side, or right-hand side, sorry. And that will give us pi mbr over 3. We take 2 times 3, which is 6. So we've got 6 t1 squared equals the force of the bird. Now, to make this look a little bit nicer, I pulled out the mbr on the outside and multiplied by pi over 6t1 squared. And now this is our force of the bird. Okay, can you see? So the motion of the device does not have to change as the wheel's angular velocity changes. The bird only exerts a tangential force once at the top of the wheel and then just rides along the wheel um, around to the initial position. The only change in motion the bird performs is at its initial position. Therefore, that's the only motion we need on our device. And in this graph, we pointed out the initial position or zero. And we also um, calculated and yeah, calculated the maximum speed of the wheel. And to calculate it, we um, the maximum speed of the wheel can spin. We use our equation for its angular acceleration to find the angular velocity. So we took alpha equal to 2fb over mbr, and we took integrals of both sides. And that's how we got omega is equal to 2 over mbr integral of fb dt. And then that's equal to omega is equal to 2 over mbr fbt. So therefore, the angular velocity of the wheel is Omega is equal to 2t fb over mbr. So the maximum speed the wheel can spin is omega, omega, where t is the total time it takes to make one full rotation. So in conclusion, um, the device that we have created must exert fb amount of force for each rotation to have the same angular acceleration as the bird in the video, where the force of the bird equals the mass of the bird times the radius times pi over 6t1 squared, with only one motion needed at the initial position of the bird. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.